The Zumwalt program was born with promises of a naval revolution. A warship unlike any other. Stealth capabilities, electric propulsion, intelligent 155 mm guns, and even the tantalizing possibility of mounting a railgun. It was heralded as the destroyer of the future. Yet, that future proved too costly for the present. Ambitions collided with reality, and the limiting factor was not technology, but budget. What was envisioned as a multi-role warship gradually transformed into something different. A floating platform for America's newest weapon, the hypersonic missile. But a question remains. Can this cutting-edge destroyer, armed with futuristic munitions, truly replace the tried and tested Arleigh Burke? For decades, the Burke has been the Navy's workhorse, its long production run making it the most enduring surface combatant in modern U.S. history. And though the U.S. Navy has ceded the title of the world's largest fleet to China's People's Liberation Army Navy, it still retains its edge in capability. Hundreds of surface ships, submarines, and support vessels projecting unmatched reach across the globe. Aircraft carriers often steal the spotlight, but the backbone of America's naval strength since World War II has been its destroyers. Today, 74 Arleigh Burke-class ships remain in service, alongside just three Zumwalt-class destroyers. Those three vessels represent the Navy's third attempt in 30 years to field a new class of destroyers, this time loading them with no fewer than 11 breakthrough technologies far beyond the traditional three or four typically introduced in a single generation. The Zumwalt's mission was clear. To restore at sea, the heavy firepower the Marines had lost when the Navy retired its last battleship in 1992. Work began in 1994 under the ambitious surface combatant for the 21st century program, known as SC-21. It was a vision of next-generation warships, among them the so-called Arsenal Ship, a floating fortress designed to carry as many as 500 cruise missiles. By the close of the SC-21 program in 2001, the vision had evolved. Building Zumwalt required more than steel and turbines. It demanded an unprecedented level of digital integration. Over 1,200 software developers, representing 30 different organizations, collaborated to produce more than 16 million lines of code. These digital veins fed into 3,500 signals, all coursing through 16 massive electronic module enclosures, each the size of a rail car. Inside them, 235 cabinets of electronics, together weighing 18 tons, formed the nervous system of the ship. Every door, every engine, every system was tied into this web. Tasks that once required sailors' hands were now automated, reducing nearly 18,000 manual processes. But stealth did not mean small. Zumwalt's silhouette was radical, a vast trapezoidal hull, its sides sloping inward above the waterline to scatter radar waves. Gone were the traditional masts and rotating antennas. Instead, flat geometric surfaces concealed everything, rendering the vessel far more elusive on radar. Yet, despite this stealthy profile, Zumwalt was a giant, 40% larger than the Arleigh Burke class, and the largest U.S. surface combatant built since the nuclear-powered cruiser USS Long Beach of 1957. One of its more unusual capabilities was hidden beneath the surface, literally. In combat, Zumwalt could partially submerge itself using ballast tanks, lowering its radar profile even further. Not a submarine, but something in between. If size and stealth defined its appearance, power defined its essence. Zumwalt was the Tesla of destroyers, driven by electricity rather than traditional mechanical systems. At its heart was the Integrated Power System, or IPS, a Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbine-powered marvel capable of generating 78 megawatts of electricity. That's enough energy to power 10,000 American homes, and more than enough to fuel future weapons like high-energy lasers or electromagnetic railguns. Instead of turbines driving propeller shafts, electricity flowed directly to advanced motors turning the screws. Simpler, quieter, and vastly more efficient. And Zumwalt was designed to bring back something the Navy had lost since retiring its last battleships. Heavy naval gunfire support. Each ship carried two advanced gun systems, massive 155mm cannons unlike anything before. 
Their ammunition was the Long Range Land Attack Projectile, or LR Lap E, a rocket assisted shell with the range of 83 nautical miles and the accuracy to strike within 50 meters of its target. Each round carried a 24 pound explosive warhead. With an automated magazine of 750 shells and a fire rate of 10 rounds per minute per gun, Zumwalt could unleash a storm of fire equivalent to a dozen M198 howitzers, all from the sea. But ambition carried a price. The Navy's original plan called for 32 Zumwalt-class destroyers. Then, reality intruded. The costs mounted. Technologies proved more experimental than expected. The fleet was reduced from 32 to 24 to just seven. And finally, in 2009, Congress approved only three. What was meant to be a new generation of destroyers became instead a rare experiment. Three ships that stood at the crossroads of innovation and limitation. In the end, the Navy chose a different path. Instead of pouring resources into an unproven experiment, officials doubled down on a proven design, the Arleigh Burke class. Over the decades, it has become the true oceanic workhorse of the United States Navy. Nearly 100 ships are planned, and the class continues to evolve through constant modernization. From air defense to missile defense, from escort duties to hunting submarines, the Burke has proven itself time and again. The decision came down to four undeniable reasons. First, cost. In fiscal year 2025, a new Arleigh Burke, designated DDG-51, carries a price tag of about $2.5 billion. By comparison, a single Zumwalt, or DDG-1000, costs $4.3 billion. Since 2009, the combined cost for the three Zumwalt hulls has ballooned by more than 50%. Second, ammunition. Zumwalt's advanced gun system, once billed as revolutionary, became a liability. Its specialized long-range land attack projectile, the LR Lap, saw prices skyrocket from around $1.50,000 per shell to nearly $1 million each. The Navy stopped buying them, and without ammunition, the guns themselves became useless. Third, radar capability. The Burke has matured into a multi-role platform. Its newest Flight 3 variants are equipped with the AN SPI-6 radar, capable of integrated air and missile defense across vast distances. By contrast, Zumwalt originally carried a dual-band radar, combining S-band and X-band. But the S-band system was later removed, leaving only a modified SPY-3 X-band radar. Effective for local coverage, yes, but not for the large-scale defensive networks that modern naval warfare demands. And fourth, anti-submarine warfare. In this domain, the Burke remains unmatched. Armed with the ASQ-89 integrated ASW system, supported by MH-60R Seahawk helicopters and RUM-139 anti-submarine rockets, the destroyer can hunt beneath the waves as well as it can fight above them. Its 96 MK-41 vertical launch cells allow a flexible loadout of weapons, fully compatible with NATO allies and streamlined for joint operations. These four factors, cost, ammunition, radar, and anti-submarine warfare explain why the Navy continued to build Arleigh Burks while scaling back Zumwalt to just three ships. In the clash between innovation and practicality, it was the proven workhorse, not the futuristic experiment, that carried the day. Zumwalt, in contrast to the Burke, carries a different kind of punch. Its 80 peripheral vertical launch system cells, known as MK57 PVLS, were originally designed to host a wide range of weapons. But with its advanced guns now silent, the Navy is rewriting Zumwalt's mission. The ship is being rearmed, transformed into a platform for conventional prompt strike hypersonic missiles. These weapons promise staggering speed and devastating reach, but they come at a cost, flexibility. Where Burke can host a wide variety of missiles for multiple missions, Zumwalt's redesign narrows its focus to a single high impact role. And yet, the Navy appears determined to breathe new life into the class. By early 2025, photographs revealed new, oversized launch tubes being fitted aboard the Zumwalts. These tubes are designed for the Intermediate Range Conventional Prompt Strike Missile, or IRCPS, 
Using advanced payload modules, each tube can carry three hypersonic missiles, up to a dozen per ship. A small number perhaps, but each missile represents a leap in lethality. This technology will not remain exclusive to Zumwalt. The Navy plans to deploy IRCPS aboard future Virginia-class Block V submarines, extending America's hypersonic reach beneath the waves. By 2026, all three Zumwalt-class destroyers are expected to carry these weapons, making them key players in any future large-scale conflict, most notably a potential showdown with China in the Pacific. But as Zumwalt evolves into a hypersonic strike platform, a new question emerges. The most serious challenge to both Zumwalt and Burke may not come from China at all. Instead, it could rise from within the US Navy itself, from a new generation of robotic ghost ships 